Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. If you're a new subscriber, thrilled to have you. Appreciate the support. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and uh, do that now. And if you like the video once it's over, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, let me know what I could do to make it better. Uniforms. When you hear that, generally most people go to military, police, firefighters, boy scouts, or how many pieces of flair the shift manager says you need to have on your uniform. But the reality of it is, is that having uniforms helps to just kind of eliminate some of the decision fatigue. And that way, if you're presented with a, a situation, it's pre-need decision-making. It's the same as your tape loops. It's the same as whatever your defensive lines in the sand are of if X happens, then Y. All you've done is thought about it ahead of time so that that way, in the moment, you can just go, boom, load program A, run it, and you're good to go. This makes life a whole lot easier because for the most part, when it comes to dudes having to dress well, one of the things that they don't want to do is figure out in the moment, what the hell am I going to wear? Does it fit? Does this look right? Is it going to make me look like, you know, like I don't know what I'm doing? Yada, 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 yada. Now, why am I telling you all that standing here in joggers and a hoodie? It's because the concept of the uniform is universal. It doesn't matter what level of style you are trying to work with. It works in the, from the super casual to the super formal and everything in between. What I like about it is... If I either don't want to deal with it or I am quickly presented with something I wasn't expecting, it's grab and go and it just makes life easy. This is one of my uniforms. You know, this is my lounging around the house and or maybe having to go somewhere within the neighborhood or within a couple blocks kind of deal. Like I might run to the supermarket and, you know, grab eggs and milk dressed like this. Um... You're not going to catch me going to a restaurant like this, even casual dining, but like basic errands and or just bumming around the house. Yeah, this works great. And the reality of it is, is even super casual, I still consider this to be well-dressed. couple reasons. Number one, it fits well. You know, there's not a whole bunch of baggy excess fabric. I don't know why, but apparently, you know, a lot of folks seem to have this aversion to their clothes actually touching their skin. Um... Colors coordinate, and they happen to flatter my overall complexion and skin tone. It's a hoodie and joggers. Ain't nobody going to look at this and go, ooh, where are you going? Uh, you know, Generally speaking, I'll just throw on a pair of either gray canvas or uh, navy blue, just fashion sneakers like Pumas, and I'm good to go. Uh, it makes life super easy, and for the really casual, this works and it just requires no thought whatsoever. Let's take a look at probably what is my favorite uniform. This one's not going to surprise you at all. Yeah, I mean, there's probably not a month that goes by where I'm not wearing some, some version of this. The navy polo and chinos is definitely a standby for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is the most versatile one that I've got. Um, you know, I can go to places that are like super casual, uh, and I can go to places that are, you know, fairly nice and kind of fancy. And it's not going to be inappropriate. I might be a little bit overdressed or I might be a little bit underdressed, but not necessarily to the point where somebody's going to go, well, he doesn't belong here. Uh, now, this is a little bit modular, but pretty much if it's not this, then it's some flavor of like chambray work shirt uh, is, is the other variant of this. But um, like I said, this is the most flexible one. And this works really well when I travel too, because again, it's tidy enough for me to be presentable, uh, but without having to worry about messing up real nice clothing with like splashes or stains or tears or whatever. Um, these particular ones are just like some Levi uh, chinos. Oh my God, Levi's anti-gun. Yeah, I know, I bought these on consignment. They didn't get my money, shut up. Um, the, the polo is the Mack Weldon Vesper, and I, I, I love this thing. It is insanely soft. It is a very open weave. So uh, especially in hot months, this thing breathes amazingly well. It's, it's about as close to going shirtless as I realistically can get. Um, I'm probably going to wind up buying a couple more of them just because 
they, they fit and they work so beautifully. What I like about this is, again, most dudes don't realize how casual polo shirts are. It's a t-shirt with a collar. So it's not dressed up by really any stretch of the imagination, but it's nicer than a t-shirt. So, you know, I can go out to a nice restaurant and not feel like I'm underdressed with this. And again, fit is critical. Not a whole bunch of excess fabric, everything fits nice and tight. Not, excuse me, not tight, fits close to the body. Because I'm a little squishy right now, but I don't look like I'm stuffed into an overtight sausage casing. So this is my most versatile. Let's take a look at if I do want to dress up a little bit and uh, maybe go to a slightly more elevated level of formality. So again, if I wanted to take it one step up, but still, you know, I don't want to get too formal with it, but I want something that's going to be kind of like a, uh, a dapper casual, this is another one of my go-tos. Lavender button-down shirt, dark denim, and uh, I didn't mention footwear in the last one, but for that and this, eh, generally kind of the same thing. I can go uh, sockless with loafers if it's warmer, uh, or I can throw either, you know, like my suede chuckas or my, my cap toe boots. Either of those will work perfectly, kind of with either of these. The full-blown leather boots might be a little chunky for the, uh, for the polo shirt, but they definitely work with this. Um, you know, again, this is one of those where it's not really super dressy, but it's presentable enough to where it gives me some flexibility. If I want to dress this up a little bit more, I can add a jacket. Um, if I want to be a little bit extra, I can only do one roll on the cuff to show the contrasting cuffs, you know, a little bit of a flare there. Um, one thing in terms of, because we're talking uniforms here, this applies to y'all who actually used to wear like a uniform for the military, the police, the fire department, etc. The gig line is not a thing for civilians. You want to make sure that your shirt placket and your fly are lined up, but for the love of everything that is sacred and holy, stop dressing your damn buckle along with your gig line. It should be centered on your fly. That is um, a huge, a huge tell. And for like normal folks, it looks weird and out of place and it draws unnecessary attention to your junk. So um, that's just one of those little things. That and uh, another one that I'm going to touch on here in a minute. But if I wanted to go with something, again, a little bit dressier, but still not like super formal, then I'd do something like this. So this is another one of my favorites. Um, it's not quite as versatile as the one that I just showed you, but this does work in kind of the mid to high levels of formality. This is something that I wore the last time that uh, I took my wife down to the Caribbean. Again, it's, it has kind of a tropical vibe to it, depending on exactly what fabrics you're using. But in the same vein, it's still nice enough that I can, you know, go into a, uh, just for example, not that I frequent them, but like I could walk into a country club like this or, uh, you know, a, a fine dining restaurant and not really have anybody look at me twice. Um, as long as I don't have a requirement for a jacket or a necktie, I'm good to go. Where, again, pretty versatile, pretty flexible. Footwear-wise, with this, I would probably go with either a uh, like a, a loafer with no socks, or you know, some kind of of kind of mid-level lace-up, like a, like a derby or, or something like that. But this is definitely a good option if I want something that is still casual but a little bit more refined. And then, lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at what I tend to do if I need something that is a little bit more formal. And so lastly, you know, if I am uh, going to an event where a suit is appropriate, I definitely, I like, I prefer blues to grays for the most part. Um, I generally go for something in kind of a, a, a mid-tone. This is not quite navy. It's kind of on the lighter side of navy. Um, I just, I, I prefer something that is a little bit more vibrant. Depending on the formality of the event, um, I may go open collar or I might wear a necktie. And uh, again, depending on exactly how formal the event needs to be, I'll either go with something that is like just subtly, uh, you know, patterned like a stripe, or if it's something that is you know, truly formal, formal, then I'll stick with a classic white dress shirt. But again, this is pretty modular because depending on the shirt I'm wearing, how I'm wearing it, and the various uh, included accessories, this can still be relatively casual, at, you know, and that's the thing that people miss, is that suits can still be casual. 
Um, they are definitely going to be more refined, but still possible to wear a suit casually. So, again, the critical piece of it is simply how well it fits. Because the cuff length is critical. You typically want about a finger's width of your shirt sticking out. Um, make sure that it, uh, you know, it's not pulling, it's not super tight in the body, and that the, uh, the shoulders fall where the shoulders are and they're not pinching and puckering. But yeah, this is kind of my, my go-to suit configuration, and I can dress that up and down or as needed. Footwear-wise, with this, I'll typically wear either my, uh, my kind of chestnut hole cuts that I got from churches or my oxblood brogues. So it kind of depends on what sort of impression I'm looking to make. And again, exactly what little formality I'm going for. I could wear you know, black Oxfords with this too, but um, those, honestly, I'm kind of of that uh, Italian school of thought where black shoes are pretty much reserved exclusively for funerals. Anything else, uh, you can generally get away with something that has a little bit more uh, panache to it. So these are my basic uniforms. I'm not saying that you have to wear this, but the idea is, is I'm hoping this will give you a framework so that you can develop your own templates that are applicable to you. And that way, if you find yourself having to dress up, dress down, what have you, it gives you that knowledge base so that you have the flexibility and it allows you to kind of build it out yourself. So that, that way you can start dressing better regardless of what it is that you're wearing. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have your own uh, uniforms that aren't cargo shorts, flip flops, and band t-shirts. <laughs> um, so aside from that, like I said, let me hear it down below. If you like the idea of working stuff like this out, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about in the Bespoke Solutions group. So if you're on Facebook, go ahead and join. There's, you know, it's free to join that. And if you are finding this material useful and you want to support the channel directly, really appreciate all my patron support over on Patreon. Um, I've got one of the guys over there at my uh, black tie level who I actually do some direct consulting with and kind of helping him manage some of this and, and build out and develop his wardrobe as well. So aside from that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp. <laughs>